Hey guys, welcome back to the video. So in this video, we'll be discussing a new topic that you see right on your screen, which says microbial growth and kinetics. So let's just start with this uh, new chapter of biochemical and bioprocess engineering. So starting off with this, so we need to understand a couple of things before getting into this. So we need to understand the substrate and the product things. Uh, basically the meaning of the two terms as such, uh, which are water substrates and water products. So substrates are what things that we feed in and put the product is something that we get out of it. That is product is something that is outputted or that is the output of the net reaction. So talking about microbial growth rate. So we need to understand like uh, in this chapter we will basically understand the when the microbes grow at the uh, highest rate and the lowest rate and all of its mechanism and how it all works and what are its specificity in growth and everything. So starting off with this, so in a microbial growth culture, nutrient utilization takes place and microbial mass increases with time. So basically the nutrients that we provide or the cells that we provide gets consumed with time and are and get decreased or are gradually decreased with time whereas the microbial mass increases or the product increases with time. So which can be demonstrated by a simple reaction as you see here. So this is a substrate plus the cells which are there. So we are supplying nutrients to the cells. All right. So these cells produce products which are known as extracellular products, which are products plus more cells as they reproduce. So supplying cells with nutrients, which are the substrates, they lead to the formation of more microbial mass or extracellular products and formation of more number of cells, which is given by delta S plus S equals to delta P plus NX. So this is N into X, N into number of cells. Also, the specific growth rate at a particular time or a particular period is given by mu net equals to 1 by X dx dt. All right. This is how we, uh, this is how it's demonstrated or this is how we write the specific growth rate of a microbial growth culture. So also this is given by, this is in the differentiation format and this is given by unit equals to UG minus KD. So in this UG is gross net gross specific rate and the KD is the death rate. All right. Uh, so in this, uh, here we have some more information about this as we as I said so in this term so X is the cell mass concentration so X here is the cell mass concentration and T is the time we know here T is the time and unit is the net specific growth rate this this is unit is the spe net specific growth rate so net specific growth uh, specific growth rate is given by mu net so mu net is what mu net is net specific growth rate equals to 1 by X dx dt also, this is described as we know in a simpler format. So the net specific growth rate is the difference between gross specific growth rate. So this is the gross specific growth rate and this is KD is the death rate or the rate of loss of cell mass. All right. So rate of loss of cell mass due to cell death or endogenous metabolism. So moving on with this. So we move on to some more of them such as the microbial growth can also be deter, uh, described in terms of cell number uh, concentration n which can be simply des uh, described as so previously we studied as cell concentration which was x so we talked about cell concentration number the cell concentration per unit square so uh, generally we describe concentration in a per unit square so like just like cells so we have like say five uh, four five six cells so this is the uh, X. This is the cell concentration at a particular unit. And this is the cell number altogether. So this is this. Uh, this has two difference. Uh, uh, there are two differences between each other. This is a uh, cell number is given by N, whereas cell concentration is given by X. So we'll talk about cell number here. So how that cell number increases or decreases in this. So cell number is given by mu R. So mu r is here is net specific replication rate. 
so mu r is the net specific member application rate where n is the number of cells and t is the time all right so this is how we give the cell growth rate in terms of number whereas we previously talked about cell growth rate in terms of cell concentration which was given by x and cell number is given by n also we have two more contradictory situations here which are if we ignore cell that kd then we use the simple ur so previously we studied that ug equals to uh i mean this is the gross so this would be a net specific growth rate so this was n and this was g minus kd right so if we ignore this kd so if we remove the kd part then we are only left with ug which is gross specific growth rate previously that we described so this term would be written as ur which is net specific replication rate all right so this is how we write uh so this was one of the statement that we got so this is the cell number concentration given by ur and that was un uh net specific growth rate also so if we ignore cell that kd here uh, again i'm just saying so if we just cancel out that so we are left with ug so ug is written as ur all right so that's how we write so in case so in case for the previous situation we had ug equals to 1 by x dx dt in this case we have ur equals to 1 by n dn dt so the previous case we had ug equals to ur minus kd this was the very basic equation that we had that is the ug equals to ur this is the net specific growth rate this is the gross specific growth rate this is the death rate so if we ignore the cell rate or cell that so if we are left with ug so ug is written as ur all right so this would be ug equals to ur all right ug equals to ur so gross so net specific growth rate is will be equal to uh this thing a uh, net uh, specific replication rate so in case uh, where death is unimportant ur will be equal to ur all right so the where we don't consider death rate so death rate uh, i'll be discussing where we don't consider death rate so it's the initial part where the cell grows and there are not deaths so that time we ignore the kd part cause there would be no death so that case ur will be ur equals to ur i'll be explaining the entire part how it goes through so moving on with that so just talk about the batch growth what is what it talks about so batch growth refers to culturing cells in a vessel with an initial charge of medium that is not altered by further nutrient addition or removal so basically it's the growth uh, growth in a particular uh, restricted environment uh, with an initial charge of medium that is applied without any addition of further addi uh, nutrients addition or removal so there are number of methods through which we can determine cell number so which was given by n all right and cell density was given by x so to determine x uh, n pardon so to determine n or cell number we have three methods such as hemocytometer cfu count from petri dish and particle counter so hemocytometer is a very important method it has it is it is present like a square and we just need to calculate the a uh, number of dead cells or number of live cells or both and we have to just multiply into 4 just finding the one uh, we just need to find the number of dead and live cells in one of the squares and we'll just multiply it by 4 to find the average out of it so this is how we use the hemocytometer you may or you may not have used a hemocytometer which is a important tool for counting number of cells also we have cfu count from petri dish uh so this is a important is a easy thing by counting the number of colonies and particle counter so we have the simple method called particle counter as well so moving on with so so now we have the determination of cell mass which is x so previously discuss about we discussed about cell number which was given by n now we have it cell mass concentration which is x so there are direct as well as indirect methods so, so there are all together lots of methods for are uh, determining cell mass 
so for direct methods we have dry weight so just uh, taking the dry weight we have packed cell volume and we have OD or optical density so we have dry weight first one we have packed cell volume and we have optical density as well and for indirect methods let's just talk about the indirect method which is specially for molds so this does not hold true for everyone uh, not for every organism but it is uh, but it uh, it holds true for molds so for indirect methods we have concentration of intracellular intercellular components which can be rna dna or genes so we just uh, determine the concentration of intracellular components intercellular components also check the atp content uh, know the anaerobic conditions anaerobic conditions which can be the presence of ethanol or lactic acid also nutrients used uh, used for the product formation so nutrients which can be nitrate phosphate or sulfate measurements also change in viscosity so mycelium growth or extracellular polysaccharides so mycelium growth uh, causes a great change of variety in viscosity also any sort of extracellular polysaccharides so this was about the determination of cell mass concentration so this is a uh, growth curve or a batch growth curve that I've got for you. So this is a time dependent change, uh, changes in cell composition and cell size for Astrobacter, Vinyl and D in batch culture. So this is as you can see the composition weight and all of the size. So this side we have the size and this side we have the weight. All right, this is the weight and this is the size. All right, so as we see the sizes, are like pretty much consistent for we have a uh, different sort of components such as nucleic acid we have dry weight we have cell volume different sort of methods as you can see so these have so with weights as weights decrease with time as you can see it starts uh, it starts from a uh, uh, from its own mean position with its initial weight and it start and it uh, initially goes up or forms a peak and later it goes down all right so the weight decreases with time as well as the size might increase or decrease that I'll be teaching you in detail in the coming videos. So this is the, uh, the bacteria we use in this was Astrobacter vinylante. So moving on. So this is the most important part that I am going to just touch through in this video before I end this video. So I'll be talking about much more detail in my next video about this. This is the most important part of microbial growth culture so let's uh, so this is uh, let's uh, this the x-axis has the time so x-axis is demarcated by time which is like 0 5 10 15 minutes and this uh, y-axis the uh, your left side of y-axis is the cell number which is you know log cell number and the right side uh, right left uh, right y-axis is OD all right so the od of the particular uh, time periods so as we start the growth process let's just say we have allowed a certain sort of bacteria or so let's say we have allowed e coli to grow in 24 hours by keeping it and uh, by providing it an nutrient culture medium so that and pouring some e coli very small amount of e coli so that it grows in 24 hours so let's just say this is a 24 hour graph okay so in this 24 hour graph it just starts from its own mean position all right with the number of cells it has initially let's just say the mean position of this one so they will follow the upper one or uh, the upper line so starting off it started it starts pretty much it takes time so that uh, it takes time because as the bacteria gets in the nutrients it does not start consuming nutrients immediately so it takes time it's it takes its own time to consume its nutrients and then reproduce or then multiply so it takes time so this part so this we do on this part the starting point or the first two to three minutes or let's say two to three hours we don't observe any sort of growth so this is the lag phase this is the phase which uh, that we know, uh, call as lag phase this is the lag phase that we call so lag phase is the period where we don't observe or we observe very little growth very very little growth and without any death 
so in this case kd is zero or we can neglect the kd so in this case we don't absorb growth as the uh, as the bacteria poured into the nutrient gets uh, uh, absorbs the nutrients and gets used to the environmental conditions so in our, after some time as we see after this line so after the uh, some sort of uh, lag phase ends so after the bacteria has consumed all of its uh, nutrients and everything and has adapted to its environmental conditions it starts multiplying rapidly so this is the curve this is the steep curve that we see here that is this is due to the rapid multiplication of the bacterium so due to this uh, rapid multiplication the mat uh, bacterium multiplies very quickly so this is the exponential phase so this is the phase where the bacteria uh, uh, is the uh, is in its most active state and multiplies very quickly with very low number of death rates very very low number of death rates and this and at a point comes so the bacteria cannot multiply indefinitely so a time comes where the nutrients gets exhausted or decreases with time whereas the cell number increases as we know so as the nutrients get decreases there comes a phase where the bacteriums uh, bacterium multiplies but not at a good rate as compared to the exponential phase so it uh, the number so the multiplication rate decreases drastically and but it multiplies but at the same time we observe growth rate as uh, we observe death rate as well so there is a little bit increase in the death rate and a, a great decrease in the growth rate so this is a deacceleration phase where the bacterium pretty much or uh, it stops it uh, pretty much decreases its growth rate and some of its death rates increases and a phase comes where the bacterium uh, grows equally and dies equally so this is a phase a stationary phase where we don't observe much growth instead we observe almost the equal growth or death rate so this is the phase where we observe where the uh, where this uh, this is the state wherein the uh, the nutrients gets gets almost exhausted and there is very less nutrients available and the bacteria are not in a, that part of state or that of uh, that part of condition are not uh, pretty much active to multiply so at this phase the at the stationary phase the cells don't divide that much so the uh, so the cells dividing ratio becomes very less as compared to death so pretty much the death rate increases here but the the growth rate does not stop the growth rate is less but the growth rate is there instead the death rate is more death the rate is more so a point comes where all the nutrients get exhausted where there is no sort of nutrients so this is the phase called the death phase where we see no growth rate so there are no nutrients so that the bacterium can absorb so how will the bacteria multiply so with the with the finishing of the substrate or the nutrients or the, with the declination of nutrient rate we observe death rate as well so the all the bacteria initially die so this was the kinetics of bacterial growth so this is the basic graph that has lag phase exponential phase this is the deacceleration phase this is the stationary phase and lastly we have the death phase so let's just keep this video till here hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned for more